This is my house decorated for Christmas. And this is my house projection mapped for Christmas. I was originally inspired to do something like this by a show that RIP no longer exists called Happily Ever After that I saw in Walt Disney World using projection mapping. It was awesome. So I tried to emulate something like that. I started in 2019, it's now 2022. We've had iterations over the years. I'll recap those a little bit and also explain what's so different about 2022 and also give you tips if you're interested in doing something like this on your house. I've been projection mapping my house. This is the fourth year that I will be doing so. I started in 2019 and kind of just changed things and added ever since then. Let me give you a little 60 second rundown if you're interested in projection mapping. First thing you're gonna need to look for is a projector. A lot of people in this space like to go the short throw or ultra short throw projectors so they can get far enough away from their house let's say in 20, 30 feet and cover the entire front of their house. Then you're gonna say, okay, well, why don't I just project like a video, like a four by three video or movie or something like that from like a Christmas movie onto the house. That's not projection mapping. The next step after you pick your projector is going to be to map the house, which essentially is just tracing the outline of the house and the main features that you wanna use. There's a ton of different software out there you could use. I've seen people go as simple as something like PowerPoint, all the way up to what I use After Effects or what other people use, DaVinci Resolve, because that is free, I believe. So I would actually suggest DaVinci Resolve if you're really gonna get into this. So you've got your projector, you made your map of the house, and then you're gonna start overlaying whatever it is onto that map of the house. You're gonna tweak the aspect ratio and tweak images and video files so that they look like they fit on the house and you're not just projecting a video onto the house. I have utilized Upwork pretty heavily. I will link to the artist that I used this year. She did an amazing job with the elves, with Santa, and getting everything animated. I love the way that it turned out. It's kind of like a cute cartoony type animation, which I absolutely love. So I will link her in the description below. She was based out of the United States, very affordable pricing. If you're willing to look globally, I'm sure you can even beat her price as well, but very competitive pricing. She did an awesome job. So going back to 2019, I started with an Optima GT 1080 HDR. I used that for the first year. I did absolutely everything myself. So I taught myself Adobe Character Animator, taught myself After Effects, and it took well over 100 hours just to get my first show going. Also, that was because I decided to do this right before the Christmas season, and I was just cramming during that Thanksgiving week. I do not recommend that. I recommend starting well in advance. Maybe start in January and slowly work towards your Thanksgiving goal of getting up and running. So I did that in 2019. I created a little nativity show and kind of was learning after effects. And some of the things that I learned were that projectors don't work very well on this like pinkish red brick that I have. A lot of people in the community, and I'll link to some community pages below. If you have red brick, red slash pink brick, it's like a black hole for projectors. They project onto it and it doesn't reflect anything. So I was mostly utilizing the windows here to project onto. So I put the characters in the window and had some very basic animations on the brick because you couldn't see them. Although I will say white is gonna show up best for a majority of your consumer grade projectors. And I'll get into that a little bit later. And then I utilized these columns as well because they're white and they projected on great. You would be surprised if you have a light color or a white home, you don't need a ton of lumens and it'll look absolutely great. So 2019 had that uh, Optima 1080. I upgraded to the 1090 in 2020. And I also was like, how am I gonna cover my house? So I added retractable screens in 2020. I definitely don't really recommend that. It was awesome. It created a lot of headaches. I was very worried about it, but essentially I found some cheap four by three, like overhead projector screens, 
hooked him up to a Harbor Freight wrench, had this whole pulley system, had it hooked up to a relay so that when the show would fire, they would pull down. When the show was over, they would go back up. I'm not typically someone who just loops the show continually. Also, last year in 2021, I added a button um, out by my Magnolia. So you could press the button and it would run the show. That was amazing, I loved it. The problem is most people actually missed the button and had no idea that I had a show. So the show ran, I think a total of 168 times over the course of the whole month of December. But there just weren't as many people in 2021 versus 2020 and 2019. So I decided to loop the show this year and ditch the button. We'll see if I end up sticking with that. Also, if you have any ideas on how to track viewership of the show, please let me know. The biggest jump that I took was between 2021, I, I think, and this year in 2022. I went from a consumer grade projector to a commercial grade projector. So I'm now on the Epson L1300U. It is refurbished and this projector it can do 8,000 lumens, not just of white, which is what most projectors are rated for. So when you see a projector like that Optima 1090, it's 4,000 lumens, it's 4,000 lumens of white. And so that color is gonna drop down a little bit, which is why white looks best typically. So this projector can do 8,000 lumens of white as well as color. So I started with that. I said, I wanna get a really bright projector and see if I don't need anything on my house. Well, this black hole of brick, as you can see, it needed to be covered in something. So I ditched the screens and I added these white sheets. They don't look amazing. It's far simpler. I don't have to worry about them pulling down, retracting the winch, any of that stuff anymore, which is great. I also decided to cover my magnolias in pixels as well. So the magnolias used to just have your warm white lights on them and now they have LEDs that are warm white as well as RGB so they can look the same as last year and they can also use color to be incorporated into the show as well. All right, these are my fans. So this year, with the projector that I have, I was reading the instruction manual. Can you believe it? I was actually reading the instruction manual because that refurbished projector, very expensive. They said operating conditions, they give you a temperature range and they give you a humidity range. And the upper, upper end of that humidity range was 80% RH. I live in Southeast Louisiana. 80% humidity is like the norm here. Um, in fact, today, let's see. Let's see what the humidity is right now. 9 p.m. it'll be 90 percent humidity 8 p.m. it'll be 97 88 6 85 5 82 percent so very humid where i live so i had to come up with a solution how the heck am i going to keep it dehumidified in that box because the projector is also going to need ventilation so i can't just vent it to the outside pull in outside air cool the projector down and pump it outside and then I thought about maybe I get a window unit and keep it cool in there and dry. And then it was just like the weight and the size of the projector box would be massive. I did try it. I didn't love the temperature swings. It got the projector as cold as 50 degrees and then it would climb all the way up to like 85, 90 degrees and then cool it down. I did not love subjecting the projector to those wild temperature swings. So this is what I came up with. I have two four inch ducts that run out to the box they hook up to the window, the front of my house, and they are sending air from my home, which is conditioned dry air out to the box and looping back to the house. The ducts are intentionally uninsulated and they actually do a pretty good job of cooling the air. So one, I'm not sending piping hot air back into my house and I'm sending even cooler air out to the projector. So depending on the temperature outside, it can drop the temperature of the air in the duct. I'm using these six inch fans and I had to do a ton of testing to get fans that worked. I started with four inch fans, they weren't enough. So I actually neck up to the six inch and then neck back down to the four inch on either side of the fan. And they move a ton of air. And my general goal was when I took the projector, I put it in a room in my house and it was 74 degrees in the room, wide open room, and I ran it for hours. Um, I used my fireboard to drive, which is awesome. I have a review to that that you can check out. And I put probes all around the outlets of the projector to say, hey, the air that's coming out of the projector, how hot is it? And so after hours of runtime, the hottest that air would get was 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very hot, but that was the goal. 
any box that I put this projector in, I do not want it to exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit because that seemed to be operating in a normal room. That would be the hottest that it got. These fans were able to accomplish that. They can push enough cold air out there and pull enough hot air out. That projector, the air coming out of the projector never gets over 120 degrees. So that projector is just as happy as being in a nice air conditioned room that's nice and dry, very open and getting tons of ventilation. The fans on that projector barely even run. So this is this setup is working great. Now it does look ridiculous. It is ridiculous, um, but it works. It's working right now. We are about, uh, I started the show a little bit early. We are a week and a half or so into running. We've had no problems so far. I've got two temperature and humidity sensors inside the box. We're staying below 50% humidity and it's doing an awesome job. All right, projector box. This projector box, it's massive. The glass is projector glass. I'll link that in the description. This little black looking box here is an infrared. It's not a repeater, but it can learn any infrared signal from a remote. It'll learn it and then it can mimic it and send it out. So I got the remote for this projector. I hit on, it learned on, I hit off, it learned off, and it turns the projector on and off every night. I was gonna use RS-232, which is what I typically do with the Raspberry Pi, but I just couldn't get it to work this year. So I, this was my backup and it ended up working. I've got my FM transmitter in here, my Raspberry Pi that runs the show. These little sensors, I have two of them. They're motion, tamper, temperature, humidity. Um, this is all done through Home Assistant, which I'm not really gonna get into. My dehumidifiers also in here. And what else do I have? That's pretty much it. I will say that if you have Raspberry Pi and you're pushing out sound, I have a Sound Blaster USB sound card that is pushing the sound. Drastically improved my sound quality between last year and this year. Also, Ubiquity is how I run all the networking in my house. I have a little switch here um, to run Ethernet to, I actually have two Raspberry Pis in here. That's way more complicated than it needs to be. One is pushing audio. One is pushing video. The video files that I'm using, this projector can do 4K, and the video files that I'm using are, are huge. They're pushing the capabilities of this Raspberry Pi 4. So I have the resolution dialed in just so much that it's high enough to where it looks good on the house. It's not quite 4K, but it's low enough that the Pi can still handle it. So to make things easier, this Pi is just doing video and it's a remote and so it is just doing the video and then the master um, is hooked up to the audio and that's also for syncing um, and it's pushing uh, the pixels. It's got another remote inside that's doing the pixels. So I did not have to set it up this way. This is way more complicated than it needs to be, but I'm using Fi Falcon Pi Player, which is what I've used every year and it is absolutely fantastic. I'm a huge fan of Falcon Pi Player and those guys that that put that together. The community is amazing. I've used the message board to ask questions and uh, absolutely phenomenal. You'll also see some foam in here. Definitely overkill, but I did insulate the box as well. There's a piece that goes on top and that's just to try to hold in the dry air as much as possible. It also holds the heat, but again, I've got those four inch ducts for ventilation and uh, I've got a good bit of security in here as well. I also have these gas struts that hold the roof open so it doesn't slam onto your head. I learned that lesson my first year, made a box, put the door up, gust of wind hit it, and it came down and hit me in the head, and I said, never again, added gas struts, and that uh, keeps me nice and safe up here. This branch is not conducive to this box, but I can get it out of the way. Uh You may have questions and say, how do you aim the projector? Historically, when I had the 1090, I had to like uh, jerry rig the box with these metal wires and turnbuckles and it was a mess. This commercial projector on the remote, you can just move the image around. It's amazing. So another kind of like little hack that I have is that 
um, from five to six. The first show is at six, starts getting dark, or I guess around five. Sunset is at 5 p.m. So projector comes on at five, and the file that it plays from five to 550 is what I call my alignment file. So it's a picture of the house, and it has the windows outlined in white. And so I can come out and check it and look at it, and that's my alignment file to make sure everything's lining up properly. So I would highly recommend that you make a file like that versus just starting a show. Because if you just have the show looping, you know, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell if it's lined up properly. So for 50 minutes, if I decide to, I can come out here and check it. Usually like once I set it, it's good for days and days unless we have like really heavy wind or something like that. So create yourself an alignment file. A lot of people in these videos, I do an update every year. So this is the 2022 update. They're like, what about theft? What about someone coming and vandalizing it? Thankfully, so far we haven't had any issues historically. I do take significant measures to ensure the safety of this projector. So I'm not gonna detail them here because I don't wanna give it away, but uh, I've taken five or six different measures on this particular projector to ensure that it doesn't get stolen. And I also have measures, if someone did happen to walk off with it, that maybe I could track it down as well. Haven't had any issues but I do have some security measures taken to hopefully keep this safe. And look, at the end of the day, if somebody wants that thing or somebody wants to smash it up, unfortunately, I probably cannot totally prevent that. But within reason, I have taken all the precautions that I can. I hope you enjoyed this 2022 update to my projection mapping video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in getting started in projection mapping, please let me know because I've gone back and forth on if I wanna do like a video series, just walking you through everything that I've done. Also, if you're interested in watching the full show, that has also been uploaded as well. So you can watch that. I, I am really proud of the way the show came out this year. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up. Merry Christmas, and we will see you next time. Yeah.